call no man your father, you Catholics. You call your priest father. Don't you know in Matthew 23, verse 9, it says right here, Call no one on earth your father. You have one father in heaven. Bad Catholics. Okay, you're, you're going against what Jesus taught. That's the accusation. Okay, so here's our response. Okay, in the verse right before that, Jesus also says, call nobody rabbi. Okay, to this very day, Jewish ministers are called rabbi. So what does Jesus mean? Did, did he mean it literally, call no man on earth your father? Or what was he trying to get across to these Pharisees? Okay, what did Jesus mean? Jesus was condemning clericalism. Clericalism is an attitude of superiority due to having a religious title. Before pronouncing all the woes in this chapter later on, Jesus warns against the bad example of the Pharisees. Jesus warns about performing works to be seen, places of honor in synagogues, and desiring greetings in marketplaces. Jesus' point is the greatest is the one who serves the rest, not the other way around. Let's read some other Bible verses where using the name Father is okay. And that's on this worksheet right here, Call No Man Father, just so you guys have it. Okay, the other point also in, this, in Matthew chapter 23 is Jesus is saying in the very next verse, after 23, 9 and verse 10, Jesus is telling them, don't be called master. You have one master, the Messiah. Jesus Christ is the master. He is the Lord. They should be calling him master. He's God. And he wants them to honor, the, he wants, they want Jesus to honor them like they're superior. Do you remember them saying he eats with tax collectors and sinners? This feeling of superiority? Okay, they have religious titles, but they're not accepting Jesus Christ as God. Okay, and he, his time has come, he's there. So he's condemning that. It doesn't matter what your title is, do you accept Jesus as Lord? Are you the one that serves the rest? And it says right there, he who exalts himself will be humbled. Whoever humbles himself will be exalted. All right, turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 4. We're going to see where it's perfectly okay in other verses to use the title Father in other verses. So Acts chapter 4, verse 25. And it's a short one, but here's the verse. Acts chapter 4, verse 25. And you said, by the Holy Spirit, through the mouth of our Father David. There's Father used, right? One more time. Now turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 7. And this is powerful. Here's Stephen. St. Stephen. Okay. Acts chapter 7. I'll begin at... Verse 1. Everybody there? Yes. Here we go. Acts chapter 7, verses 1 and 2. Then the high priest asked, Is this so? And he replied, Stephen, here's Stephen replying, My brothers and fathers, listen, the God of glory appeared to our father Abraham. So here's uh, Saint Stephen. Referring to the high priest and the, the Pharisees that were around as fathers. And also referring to Abraham as Father Abraham. Right there in scripture in black and white. Let's continue. Let's go to Acts chapter 22. I'm not done yet. we got some more ammunition here. Acts chapter 22 verse 1. Here's Paul. So now we had St. Stephen, here's St. Paul. Paul's defense before the Jerusalem Jews. Here's Paul, verse, uh, chap, Acts chapter 22, verse 1. My brothers and 
Fathers, listen to what I am about to say to you in my defense. So he is actually using fathers as a term to the religious people that were there in Jerusalem. Okay, now let's go to St. John. So we don't just say one apostle's doing it. Let's go to John, 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter 2, and then we'll go verse 13 and verse 14. And here we go. Here's John. I am writing you, I am writing to you fathers. That's verse 13. First John chapter 2, verse 14. I am writing to you fathers, because you know him, him who was from the beginning. So here's John using fathers once again. Okay, now let's go to the Old Testament, okay? Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 2. Now, would you say Elisha was a holy person? Okay. So, now Elijah, here's the stage, okay? Elijah is about to be taken up. To, he's being taken up. He just got taken up in a chariot to heaven, and the, okay? So, here's... Elisha's response, and I'll read the couple of verses to you. So this is Second Kings verses, excuse me, Second Kings chapter two, verses eleven and twelve. As they walked on conversing, a flaming chariot and flaming horses came between them, and Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. When Elisha saw it happen, he cried out, "My father, my father!" That's straight from the Bible. Okay, let's go to uh, 2 Kings chapter 13. <clears throat> 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 14. This is when Elijah was, Elisha was getting old. Okay, 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 14. When Elisha was suffering from the sickness of which he was to die, King Joash of Israel went down to visit him. My father, my father, he exclaimed. So here's King Joash of Israel using my father, my father, to address Elisha. Okay, Romans. We're almost done. Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9, verse 10. Romans chapter 9, verse 10. Here's another example of the term father being used. In this case, it's for Isaac. Here's the verse. Romans chapter 9, verse 10. And not only that, but also when Rebekah had conceived children by one husband, our father Isaac, before they had yet been born or had done anything good or bad, in order that God's elective plan might continue. So here's Isaac being referred to as Father Isaac. Okay, last verse. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 15 now this is one case where I like the New American Bible I like this translation I actually in this case I gotta say I like it better than the King James or Douay Reims version and I'll, you'll know in just a moment so 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 15 here's St. Paul and here's the verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. Even if you should have countless guides to Christ, yet you do not have many fathers, for I became your father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. So here Paul is saying he became their father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Father is used once again. Thank you.